Today we have invited one of the senior migration agents in Melbourne uh, to Sri Lanka Morning Show program to share some uh, changes to the migration law in Australia. So first of all, we would like to uh, welcome Mr. Sanji Caldera to Sri Lanka Morning Show program. Thank you, Tushana. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Sanjay, first let us know what kind of services that you are providing to your clients and uh, what is the structure of your organization? Essentially, Tushara, we are um, a migration agent practice and our concentration is about advising people about their visa options to Australia. We also have uh, another section that we also advise people on the Canadian uh, migration process. So we have set up um, our office in Melbourne. This is the Melbourne is uh, our main um, head office and we're based uh, off Queen Street. But we also have an office in Colombo um, and we also have an office in Dubai. And um, we have some very skilled um, senior relationship managers. And in fact, we also have uh, a, a younger a uh, migration agent who has just qualified and um, two people who are already studying for. So we bring in a lot of skills and a lot of knowledge uh, into our practice. Right. Now, especially we invited you today to discuss about uh, some uh, important facts for our, our viewers because now this due to this uh, COVID pandemic, there are so many changes to uh, migration and the migration law. That's right. So could you explain how this affects the migration and the migration law. Yes, I will very sadly, um, uh, COVID has come to stay the end of 2020 and we don't know how 2021 will um, unfold. Mm. But um, every aspect of people who are seeking migration and also people living here has, as you know, got affected. The border closures has made a, a real impact for people who have been visiting here and want to get back to their countries um, and most importantly people overseas who are going through the general skin migration and other visa processes which they can't come into Australia. At the moment as you know only permanent residents and citizens are allowed uh, into the country and a selected subclass 188 business migrants are also allowed to come into the country. So. The, the department has made a lot of concessions. One of the main concessions were for people who are on holiday here uh, to Shara. We have this condition called no further stay and where they should return to their country before the expiry of the visa. Now with the COVID situation and borders being closed, they were unable to. And one of the concessions that the department gave was to lifting of these uh, conditions that will allow them to apply for other visas and they've been quite generous about it. The next biggest impact mm -hmm. I can talk about is students who just finished their 2019, their, they finished their studies sometimes and they went back to their countries for their holidays and they couldn't come back. Now one of the things that the department has very generously um, uh, allowed is to consider online studies and the, these students who are studying online overseas will be in fact considered that they spent time in Australia mm -hmm. and certain visas that the students were allowed to apply like the temporary resident um, popular known as the subclass 485 visa one could now if they fulfill the requirements could in fact apply from um, offshore and consider themselves as if they have applied from onshore. So there are the two main um, concessions that the department uh, has brought in, but many are being brought in as we speak. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we would like to know a bit of extra information about the occupation list and uh, what are the requirements for that and how that affects the students uh, who are studying currently in uh, Australia? Yes, I think this is one of the most important questions. Uh, lots of the students are going through a very difficult time. Uh, the uncertainty. For students, there are 
um, we a lot of people concentrate on what we call the general skill migration. We have where they skill themselves, they get their English, um, they have this point system, and they wait for an invitation. Now, invariably, um, many of the many of the students and many of the um, uh, temporary visa holders are just not getting um, any invitations. Uh, simply, however high points that they uh, can uh, get it's a really a limited amount so one of my advice um, that I give specifically for students and for temporary resident visas to look at all options and one of the most popular and certainly I could say majority of my clients would need to go through what we call the employer sponsorship opportunities and if you are employed in your occupation the occupation that you studied and you're skilled in and you have found some employment um, closely related or in your own occupation there are many many options available and I could say that um, this is something that I try to educate my clients that without waiting for the general skill migration options of we call it state sponsorship we call it independent but it's very hard to come by, mm -hmm. and um, and and this is the advice I give students who are just finishing their studies, coming into their four, eight, five, the temporary yes. student visa, and for each student, I would have to come up with a different solution, mm -hmm. and it is extremely important that they seek a advice from their migration agents early for these solutions. Right now. A lot of students, you know, uh, one of the you know the common questions that they ask is like whether they have to go interstate, so can they, uh, you know, uh, stay in Victoria and uh, you know continue studying or you know uh, seeking for employment. So, what kind of uh, advice that you offer? That's a good question. That is the first question that many of my clients ask. Yeah. Um, Sanjay, could I go uh, to Darwin? Could I go to Tasmania? That's very popular. Yeah. Uh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> but no, unfortunately, um, I do not give a give a sort of advice uh, across the board. It is individual advice. Not many uh, students do have to travel interstate and trying to look for work and so forth. So every student, depending on their occupation, depending on their background, depending on their English, um, and depending on what type of work they do right in yeah. Victoria, or perhaps I'm talking about anywhere in Australia, they don't have to rush off to a, another state. It, it will depend from a case by case basis. However, I do encourage students to always look for a balanced amount of work in regional Australia, I'm mm. not talking here interstate, I could mm. say if it's Victoria, regional Victoria, or yeah. if it's New South Wales, regional New South Wales, mm. and in the CBD areas, because securing an employment uh, in regional Australia is they have a better chance and more options available. Mm. Um, so it is a case by case um, basis that I would advise and give them a solution. With the current situation, what kind of uh, PR options are available for students and for the temporary residents? Yes, once again, I, I'm coming back to that that particular uh, topic where uh, a student will ask me, um, Sanjay, what are my PR options? Which PR visa that I can apply? But mainly, it is a step-by-step -step process. As I said, general skill migration where you apply for your permanent residency is very limited. Mm. So um, it might change, but it, it doesn't look good in the foreseeable future. It is through an a employee nomination scheme that you can in fact get your permanent residency. But if you do not, you have only two years of two years that you get on the temporary resident visa after you study mm -hmm. so it's and you can't find a job and work for two years too so we have things called a trainee visa mm -hmm. for people who do not have two years of work experience then once they are on a trainee visa and they uh, accumulate two years of work experience they can go to a temporary skill shortage visa which is called the subclass 482 that's very commonly known by people as the 482 two, yeah. and then 
once they complete three years of work experience and if their occupation is in the critical list, we call it the medium to sh- long term list, they, their employer can sponsor them for permanent residency. Right. So it's step by step. And should the occupation be in the short term list, then from the very beginning, I would say you need to go to regional Australia. Mm. And regional Australia is not the desert. Yes. We have some beautiful c- cities like uh, if I say in Victoria, Warnerbull or Shepparton, yep. Ballarat, Bendigo, they are big cities mm. and they have a lot of employment opportunities. Mm. And in fact, regional employees are really seeking out to find suitable employees. So there is there are jobs for skilled people. Yeah. I think our viewers got a very valuable information from Sanjay today, uh, especially the students who are studying in Australia. Now, uh, there are so many other uh, visa related uh, topics that we need to talk with Sanjay. Uh, we would like to have Sanjay once again uh, in Sri Lanka Morning Show program. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Sanjay, and uh, we would like to have you again in Sri Lanka Morning Show very soon. Uh, thank you, uh, Tishara. It's been a pleasure being here today and happy to help anytime. Thank you.